When your husband looks at another woman. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation and I can help you with this one. I want you to understand something about women and men. And that is that men are more conspicuous than women. Women look at other men and men look at other women can't help it. We live in a world where due to our biology and innate in our bodies is the drive to survive, right? And the drive to survive is constantly telling your mind, watch out. You don't know what danger is out there. It's also telling your mind, watch out. You never know what opportunity is out there. And this means that you have two big functions going on as a result of the drive to survive. One is the material survival of the body and the other part is the procreative drive. It's, it's just below the don't touch me or I'll kill you drive. And this drive to procreate never goes away. This drive to self-protect never goes away. So this drive to look for opportunity is always there. What do I mean by opportunity? You know what I mean by opportunity. Now, we're human beings. We're not dogs. I mean, we walk down the street and if there's a lot of dogs around and there's a female dog in heat, you're going to see a line of male dogs. And sometimes they're fighting each other over the rights and sometimes they're just in line waiting for their turn. They don't have discrimination. That female's not going to be anybody's wife. But human beings are not animals. We have an animal body. We do. But we're angels in an animal body. We're endowed with the ability to recognize ourselves for what we truly are, which is souls. And so as a result of that, we use our discrimination to tailor our lives according to our society. And our society tailors itself according to the dictates of a principles-based morality, hopefully. <laughs> so, in other words, we don't look, men, don't look at other women with the idea in our mind, whoa, I'm going to get a piece of that. And women aren't looking at other men with maybe I'm ready. No. But the instinctive, the instinctive compulsion doesn't go away because we have bodies. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't go away for everybody. There are some souls, some individual men who have so disciplined themselves that they no longer see women as opportunities. Legitimate and sincere priests, monks of any order, deeply devout aspirants. They don't see women that way. They see them as their daughters or their sisters or their mothers. So if your husband looks and he's undisciplined, as most men are, he may look twice. If he's somewhat disciplined, he may look until he notices you noticing that he's looking and then he'll look away. If he's mad at you, he may look and kind of rub it in your nose that he's looking when he notices you noticing him He'll look so that you notice. And if that's the case, then you need to do something about your marriage because there's something wrong with what you're delivering to your marriage. And you might say, no, no, he's the one looking. Doesn't matter what I'm doing. He's looking. He's bad. No. That's a very selfish attitude. You didn't get married 
to put him on a leash, I hope. I hope you got married so that you could fulfill your promise to him of loving him unconditionally, respecting him, nurturing him because you've got that heart quality that he lacks. Isn't that why you married him? To make him happy? Isn't that what you told him? I'll make you happy, dear. You'll be so happy. So if he's looking and making it a point for you to recognize that he's looking, then you're not delivering in your marriage and you need to change your ways. But if he's just glancing and then looking away, don't project your fears. Control your mind. Understand that that jealousy that you have, because there's no better word, is part of your drive to survive. And it has no place in the marriage. So mitigate its effects. Don't say anything. Don't display any emotion. Let it go. And recognize that your husband is a man. And then give him the kind of loving. I'm not talking about sexual. But give him the kind of loving where he feels there is no woman in this world who loves me more than my wife. Because if he's not thinking that way, that's on you. That's not on him. Now I know I'm going to get a bunch of comments about this where some women are going to be outraged and are going to go, man, you know, you're a typical fashioned a-hole and you are just looking at it from a man's point of view. No, I'm not. I'm looking at it objectively. And if you're not looking at it the way I'm looking at it, then you're the one who's got the problems. And it's true. And if you have that problem and your husband is looking at other women, your problem's going to get exasperated because you're building up a cycle between you of mistrust, misunderstanding, and it's not going to work. You got married in order to be happy. And so did your husband. And you want to do everything in your power to make your husband happy. And I do mean everything in your power to make him happy. And now I'm going to tell you, don't try to do this on your own because you don't understand your husband. I know that you, you don't understand him just by the fact that you're looking at this video. Get one of my books, learn about marriage. I went to the same schools you did. They don't teach us about relationships. They don't teach us about gender differences and how they impact us. We don't learn. We don't learn the simple, most basic things about marriage. For instance, why did you get married at all? Answer, you got married to be happy with an expectation that you would get ever more happy as the years went on. Did you know that? No, but that's bottom line principle because that becomes your pole star. That should guide all of your actions. Second principle, what makes you happy? Yeah, we all like to make more money. We all like to go out and pig out. We all like to dance and have fun, but that's all fleeting happiness. What always makes us happy, ever expanding happiness, is unconditional love. Principle two. So these two are the twin pole stars for all of our behavior. How, why? Because you have free will, you have volition, you get to control all of your behavior. So everything that you do, you know, getting married isn't getting on a ride at a theme park. You still have to act out your life, and it's a spiritual path marriage because love is the ultimate reward. Happiness, joy of love is the ultimate reward. So you have to do in accordance to the guides of happiness and unconditional love. Yeah. Forget this little stuff. He's looking at women. 
focus on your marriage, make your marriage amazing. That's where it's at. All right, don't be mad at me and I won't be mad at you. <laughs> I won't be mad at you anyway, but don't be mad at me. I'm sharing with you things that I've been working on decades. And you know, I was a divorce mediator before and I have never, when I was a divorce mediator, I never had clients come in where the wife has said, well, he looks at other women. Cheated on me, yeah, but looks at other women, no. Make your marriage phenomenal. It's in your power. And you don't need to do it together with your husband. Marriage is an individual path that you do together, but you're only responsible for your own behaviors. All right. You can subscribe to my videos. You can like this one or you could not like this one. And you could also leave a comment. You could share this. And mostly, I just want you to have a very happy marriage. It's so doable. It's so doable. Blessings to you. Blessings to your husband. Blessings to your family. God bless you. Thank you for taking your time with me.